The top series used to be a series based on resilience, performance, and most importantly, budget. Well, these days are gone. We are now dealing with a proper premium motherboard in its power delivery, in its manufacture, in its features, and well, it's pricing. Today, we are reviewing the old grown-up Top Z590 Gaming Plus, an entirely new kind of gamer which is about to shadow a lot of its more expensive siblings. It is just toughing awesome. Tough, tough, toughing as in tough as... Why do I even bother? I reviewed a lot of tough motherboards in my days, um, and I usually get an entry level, a first time builder, which brings some interesting design, but generally remains a first time builder, an entry level motherboard. But the tough Z590 Gaming Plus is a different animal altogether. And I'm not only talking about more premium features and better components, but yes, even some industry changing innovations. And something tells me that this board is about to set new standards. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a six-layered PCB-ATX motherboard, exactly what I expected out of a PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard in terms of PCIe signal uh, uh, integrity as well as a better VRM heat dissipation. CPU socket-wise, we got an LGA 1200 CPU socket able to support both 10th and 11th generation of Intel Core processors. Note that only the 11th generation Intel Core CPU comes with PCIe 4.0 lanes, which has its importance since this is where our board PCIe 4 abilities will be sourced from. Now, small reminder, PCIe 4.0 standard outputs double the bandwidth available on PCIe 3 standard from 1 gigabyte per second per lane to 2 gigabyte per second per lane. Obviously something which will deeply impact uh, your computer performance and I will tell you through the review exactly where that does happen. VRM wise, we have 1750 amps power stages organized in 8 twin phases plus 1 IMC phase, 7 of which are CPU centric. That is 700 amps worth of power to juice out every single overclocking potential out of your processor 10th or 11th generation obviously and noticeably 100 amps more than its Z490 predecessor and you'll feel every bit of it. But where this VRM really, really shines is in its heat efficiency. With an overclocked 4.7 GHz i9-10900K and a torture of 75 minutes at 100% synthetic load, I barely managed to detect 53 degrees Celsius on its main VRM block, an absolute feat of heat efficiency, which does translate in a more stable system as well as a longer lifespan. Now, how did the Tough Z590 gain? Gaming Plus did it. Well, by seriously upgrading its passive cooling components. Exit the skinny heat sinks and say hello to a full IO heavy block. I mean, look at it. The entire IO roof is part of the heat radiating solution. Thicker walls, more heat expressing surface and a double contact design. Now, this kind of heat blocks are usually featured on much more expensive models, such as a Maximus 13 here, which by the way, I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so just yet. In short, between the six PCB layering and its amazingly good cooling solution, Asus equipped this board with all the requisite fundamentals to make it one of the most heat efficient and powerful board on its price range. Memory wise, the Tough Z590 Gaming Plus supports up to 128GB of DDR4 RAM in a dual channel configuration, overclockable up to a whooping 5133MHz, that is 333MHz more than its previous iteration, the Z490 Tough, uh, something obviously which will have a direct impact on your gaming and production levels, but note that uh, to obtain those kind of higher clock, you'll probably be able to do so only on a single RAM stick. And the more RAM stick you're going to populate your DIMMs with, the lower the clock uh, uh, will go. So basically, if you want to see those 5 gigahertz kind of clock, you're going to probably have to go with more expensive, higher density single RAM sticks. Staying in the memory, our Tough Z590 Gaming Plus supports up to three and not two solid set drive sticks, and there is a lot to unpack here. Depending on which processor you couple this board with, performance and configurations will differ. With a 10th generation PCIe3 only Intel Core CPU, only two M.2 solid set drive 
will be enabled, swapping data up to a standard 32 gigabit per second, but couple it with an 11th generation PCIe 4 enabled Intel Core CPU and R3 sticks will be fully enabled. Furthermore, the closest one to your processor will be able to operate at PCIe 4 levels, meaning data swaps up to a whopping 64 gigabit per second, obviously perfect for a boot drive. In both cases, these sticks will go very hot very quickly and luckily we do have this long and and I mean long thick thermo padded heat shields which do a great job at keeping our sticks from thermal throttling. But the star here and I underlined the star is a brand new feature which I absolutely adore. We have this brand new lock-in mechanism introduced by Asus to secure our M.2 solid set drive with ease without screws. Again, probably the biggest small improvement and something that I absolutely love, both in its use and its robustness. No more uh, losing those tiny minuscule screws around and something that really places the tough ahead of its competition. But I have absolutely no doubt that we're gonna see this feature bleed out through the entire industry. My only question is why Asus has only done this on the top because I just released uh, my review of the Maximus 13 Hero and it was not there and something that I really really regret so a gigantic innovative kudos to Asus for this. Chipset wise we are dealing with a brand new Z590 chipset from Intel which to be fair has been advertised heavily as a PCIe 4.0 uh, um, enabled chipset but in fact is really not. Despite the fact that it can use our 11th generation CPU 20 PCIe 4 lanes to feed any components on the board, it doesn't provide any itself. It still has the same 24 PCIe 3 lanes we saw on the Z490 and that's why we got that weird mix of PCIe standard on every Z590 board. Now, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. Since our CPU takes care of all of our PCIe 4.0 lanes, our chipset can remain at a cool 6 watt of its signature. So no need of an active and expensive chipset cooling solution as seen on its rival old PCIe 4 X570 chipset. But more important than its fake PCIe 4.0 abilities, the Z590 chipset does feature an uh, an upgraded DMI link, which provides an 8 gigabyte per second direct link to the CPU, double the bandwidth of its previous generations, allowing more bandwidth to chipset fed components. And I would even say that's probably the main motivation why you would want to upgrade from a Z490 to a Z590 motherboard, because it's this larger DMI link allows us so much more bandwidth out of our motherboard, a feature which definitely uh, should please creator content in particular. Export-wise, we have two 16 PCIe slots and two bachelor ones. As usual, only the closest PCIe to your CPU can deliver up to 16 full bus speeds, therefore this is where I'd place your video card for optimal performances, hence the metal reinforcement. The second naked 16 slot is capped at only four PCIe lanes, not exactly GPU friendly, which is fully expected on a gaming-centric motherboard. Now again, the PCIe standard will vary depending on which processor you will be using with the board. With a 10th generation core CPU, all of our exports will run at PCIe 3 standard with 1 gigabyte per second bandwidth per PCIe lane. But couple the board with the incoming Rocket Lake 11th generation core CPU and our 16 slot expansion, we'll see its bandwidth double to 2 gigabyte per second per lane. That is up to 32 gigabyte per second each direction to feed your video card but obviously to be fair that will not translate in any gaming performance gain since all of our video card today AMD or Nvidia are still to bottleneck and output enough bandwidth to go beyond the PCIe 3.0 standard so again great future proofing and marketing mainly. Next, let's quickly note the presence of our usual six SATA ports able to swap data to that slow but reliable six gigabit per second. Nothing new here. But more importantly, let's move on to our back IO, which does feature a padded integrated back plate. Another first for the tough series, which again makes it a little bit more premium. And starting from the left, we have a PS2 connector, which I'm not a great fan of. I'd rather have more USB 
plugs, but some of you really like it, so fine. Next, we have two USB second generation plugs. Next, we have two integrated display outputs, including an HDMI 2.0, which can render up to 4K uh, at 60 frames per second, which will have its importance since the uh, 11th generation of Intel Core CPU will come with next generation integrated graphics, something we should keep an eye on. Next, we have two USB 3.2 generation able to output up to 5 gigabit per second, a Wi-Fi 6 dual band adapter with speeds going up to the classic 2.4 gigabit per second, and three 3.2 second generation USB plugs, two type A rated up to 10 gigabit per second, and for the first time on this series, a dual channel type C able to output to a whopping 20 gigabit per second, which is a direct result of that uh, upgraded DMI link I was talking about earlier. Next, we have our search protected 2.5 gigabit LAN adapter, again an upgrade which we are well accustomed since the Z490 series. And finally, our S1200 8-channel audio codec, which is obviously one of the most premium uh, uh, audio codec you can have on the market and which takes full advantage of the multiple PCB layering since both left and right audio channel have been traced on dedicated PCB layer for better sound isolation. But more than that, we also have the tough audio guard which also provides some interference protection and as a result we have an almost studio graded recording abilities which was really the focus of this audio codec today and again which will please the streamer amongst us. Overall a very well featured back IO, a definite upgrade compared to its Z490 variant and a definite focus from Asus for content creator and gamer streamers, especially with a very good uh, recording ability, the 2.5 gigabit LAN and that 20 gigabit Type C we saw earlier. So. Overall, a big uh, back IO kudos to Asus for this. Front panel connector wise, nothing surprising here. We got our two second generation USB blocks, perfect for monitoring, and two five gigabit front panel connectors, type A and type C, definitely in par with the board pricing. Cooling wise, we have a more conservative six PWM fan connectors, one of which will support your all-in-one water pump. Obviously enough to provide a solid airflow all throughout your gaming uh, build, but, I will regret the fact that we don't have hybrid connectors, uh, which would have given the ability to every single individual connector to support either a water pump, uh, a PWM fan, or even a flow sensor, and which would have given so much more enthusiastness and agility to that board. It's something I do not despair to see in the next iteration of the tough. Troubleshooting wise, we do have our easy debugger to guide us through the main booting stages of our board. Crucial in a PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard, but at that new price range, I wouldn't have been sad to see a QLED error to allow us to refine our troubleshooting process. Something again, Asus should take in consideration for the next iteration of that board. And finally, Asus being Asus and tough being tough, we have our fair share of RGB nonsense, starting with two nested RGB RGB strips located on both extremities of our front PCB, and no less than four OR RGB connectors, two of which are addressable, roughly placed at opposite ends of our board for easier access. Now, I do regret the absence of an extra one under uh, the, the old metallic IO roof because it does have the same, how to say, uh, uh, strips that we've seen on the rock, which did have one, and I think it would have added a little bit of, of aesthetic to the board overall. But worry not, the tough still has enough RGB potential to outshine the sun. Now, in conclusion, at about 260 USD, the Tough Z590 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi is about $60 more than its Z490 predecessor, and the question is, is it worth it? Well, if you are already running a Z490 powered motherboard, short answer is no, it's not worth it, because it will be able to support 11th generation core processors and output PCIe 4.0 level bandwidth, so there's not so much of an incentive in that area. But if that's not your case, if this is the first time build or an upgrade from an older motherboard, absolutely, even though we have this, this price uh, increase, quite a price increase, the Z5, the tough Z590 Gaming Plus also brings a lot more on the table, more than it ever did before. When I said this is going from budget to premium, 
It really did, and it does so with an acceptable price jump. First, we have this heavily upgraded VRM, those gorgeous, efficient cooling components, the overall engineering quality. This has nothing to do with the previous budget's uh, focused, tough motherboards. And I cannot underline enough what a genius move that M.2 solid state drive locking system is. And my only hope is to see that feature adopted in many more motherboards to come. And if you are a gamer, an overclocker, or even an enthusiast, you'd be a fool to pass on this. If you can find it, which is not a given, uh, given the situation, the stock situation worldwide, if you can put your hands at it at MSRP price, well, there's really nowhere else you money wants to be.